All right, this is lesson six of fall semester 2020 in church history class. Again, in church history now in chapter, looked at chapter four last week. Uh, and now we're going to chapter five. It's a very familiar story, uh, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, it seems like in every dispensation, and uh, talking about dispensations in the past, but like when the law began, when the church began, when human government began and all, that the consequences of sin was more easily seen than as the dispensation went on. Uh, dispensation of the law, you know, when Moses, uh, God gave the law to Moses and they were going through the wellness journey, uh, one of the commands was not to work on the Sabbath day. And the children of Israel found someone who was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And they went to Moses and asked what should be done. And uh, Moses went to God and God said, stone him to death. Uh, which seems like a very harsh consequence. But it's not to get picking up sticks that mattered. It's a direct disobedience to God. And as the dispensation went on, though, there were people committing a whole lot more sin, open sin, and yet we didn't see the consequences of their actions. Right? And I, I'm not sure why that is, it's just something I've noticed in the scripture. Well, when the church began, uh, you know, if, if today God would kill everybody for lying to them, nobody would be left. You know? But in the early church here, as the church began, people started gathering things together. You know, uh, uh, Barnabas was giving in chapter 4, and then others were giving in the early church. Uh, Anna Sapphira uh, had the opportunity to give to the beginning church and said they had a piece of property that they would sell the property and give all the money to the church. And that was fine for them to do it. It wasn't required by God. God didn't ask for that. Uh, uh, Peter and none of the other disciples asked them to do that. That was just their way of giving. But what happened is, and we'll see here, a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold in possession, kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Uh, they, no, nothing's wrong in this passage right here. Uh, it says they sold in possession, they kept back part of the price. No, nothing wrong with that. Uh, his wife knew about it, perfectly fine, and then laid it at the apostles' feet. So far, so good. Nothing uh, at all wrong here. But, what had happened was they promised everything and they kept back part. Now, I'm assuming they got more for it than what they thought they would get and decided that, you know, well, you know, the church thought was going to give uh, $4,000 anyway. Well, let's you know, make up a, a, a figure here, but the church expected $4,000. We got 5000 from it, so if we still give them $4,000, they're going to be more than satisfied with that. And so, you know, this makes us look good, uh, saying that we gave it all when we didn't, and that's where pride comes in. Uh, you know, it kind of reminds us back of Achan, back in uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 7, at the uh, battle of Ai, I remember that uh, right after the battle of Jericho, they uh, went against a small city called, so the pronunciation is spelled Ai, but the pronunciation would be I. Uh, just about, uh, as I. We, most people still say AI, but technically it would be I. But the point being is that uh, people died there, and Joshua was told by God to why. And the reason was because in the Battle of Jericho, God said to destroy them, not to take anything from the city. Right. Uh, but Achan took some gold, silver, and a Babylonian garment. Uh, but in the, this is a foolishness of sin. Uh, he took these items, but what did he end up doing with them? He, he buried them. Mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't use them. It was kind of like uh, several years ago, there was a, and there still is a, a painting uh, called The Scream. I don't know if you ever saw it. I think it's a $100 million painting, if not mistaken. And it's called Scream. And it was stolen from some museum, I guess the Louvre or something. Uh, and they, got, they end up getting it back, but I'm thinking, what good would it be to steal that painting? Uh, you couldn't show anybody. I mean, there would no, be no reason. 
to show it did because if you did you'd get caught and so all you could do is take it and hide it and know that you had it but other than that there's no practical use to it. Uh, well this is what happened with Achan. Uh, he, he stole it, he buried it in his tent and when we, we think of his tent a lot of times people think of a little pup tent that he's all by himself but this is a family tent and that's why his family knew what he had done because when they went to find out who was responsible him and his family was stoned to death. And the only way they could be stoned to death under the Mosaic law was they had to know about it as well. Because Deuteronomy 24, 16, the father shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the father. So, uh, again, just the, the greed, uh, lying to cover it up, Achan's sin cost not only his life, but uh, other children of Israel's life. Uh, because God had warned them about what was going to happen. But, very importantly, Achan, Ananias, Sapphira, serve as an example to us today. Uh, we, we know of these events, not just for historical knowledge, to know what happened to Achan or Ananias, Sapphira, but to warn us that there are consequences for our actions as well. Uh, when we lie, especially we lie about our spirituality, and that's really what Ananias and Sapphira were doing, trying to be more spiritual mm -hmm. than everybody else. We gave more than you gave, so therefore we are more spiritual than you are. Uh, which is obviously not true, but it's that pride. It gets down to, my line is pride. I have to have this. And so, of course, God uh, dealt with Achan uh, by having him stoned dead. Uh, Peter ends up dealing with Ananias initially over this. Uh, Achan and uh, Ananias both were confronted by God's leader at that point, Joshua, and in this case, uh, Peter. And this is very important here, uh, the way this is worded, because Peter's response to Ananias, what happened, he said, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart, that is not lied unto men, but unto God? And we also see the Trinity, at least two parts, persons of the Trinity in this verse. He says, why would you lie to the Holy Ghost? Why would you lie to God? Equating the two as one and the same, which they, they are. Uh, but Peter didn't say, why would you lie to me about this? Why did you lie to the disciples? Why did you lie to the church? He put it where it was really at. You lied to God. Because all sin is against God. No matter what it is. If it's, you, you uh, don't like your brother or sister, uh, or uh, what have you, well, that's against God as well. And so, their sin here was a sin against God. No matter, no matter what happened, it was a sin against God. And then Peter uses two words here, two, uh, uh, twice his word, lie. Uh, and I believe this is a supports the position that Ananias actually was a saved man. Uh, because if he were lost, Peter would know why he lied. He lied because he's lost, he's a sinner. What do sinners do? Yeah, they, they lie, they, they sin. sin. By, by nature, that's who they are. And so Peter here uh, apparently knew that Ananias was a saved man. Can a saved man do this? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that, again, that happens today many times in our churches. Sometimes people lie about their spirituality or uh, try to make themselves look better than what they are. Uh, it doesn't mean they're not saved. It just means they're letting sin rule in their life at that time. And we can't do that. We need to make sure that we don't do that. Uh, so you don't ask an unsaved person why I commit sin. He's under bondage to sin. What book is that on? Uh, Acts. Acts 5. Yeah, Acts 5. Mm -hmm. Chapter 9, verse 4. Verse 4, right here. 
Well, it was remained was nothing in. Oh, this, this is not the actual verse right here. Okay. Uh, that's is, okay. Here's the verse. Yeah. Uh, okay. While the remain was not thine own. Okay, that's right. why, because I, I don't write down the verses, I just write down the, the, right. the, the reference. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I, I didn't I see it, I was like, okay, maybe yeah. I need to write that down. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is not the verse. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, I got saying. you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is simply saying that Peter used the word why uh, with him twice. Mm -hmm. Why did you lie? Why did you do this? Why did you lie to the God? Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? So, uh, a very important question here. Uh, because even as a believer, but this also goes right along with, uh, as believers, uh, 1 John 5, uh, 17, 18, last part of chapter 5, uh, John deals with uh, sin and asks the question, or t makes a statement about a sin unto death. And the book of 1 John is a book on fellowship, so it's written to believers. And therefore, when it talks about this sin unto death, it's not one particular sin that uh, causes death. Uh, the, only, uh, the only sin that cannot be forgiven is denying Jesus Christ as your Savior. Right? As long as you deny Jesus Christ, you're not forgiven. When you accept Jesus Christ, then all your sins are forgiven. Uh, John deals with it and talks about a sin unto death. And the word sin in, in the Greek there may be a little bit easier to understand than it is in English, but if you read the whole book, you still get the, the right meaning uh, if you read it in, in English. But it's talking about a continual sin. Uh, there is, those who continually sin is a sin unto death. So if a believer it continues to commit a sin and never gets rid of it out of their heart, Eventually, God's going to take him out of this world. Here, it was very obvious and open that Ananias uh, uh, sinned, and God took him out. Uh, but as the time, as the dispensation goes on and on, it becomes a little bit different as far as what we see. Uh, because, you know, we don't see God's chastening on other people. Uh, we might think that we do sometimes, and we could absolutely be wrong. Yeah. That's why I will never say... And I've heard people say, well, God killed so-and-so because they did this or they did that. I'm not about to go there because I don't know. Right. Uh, could it be? Yes, it could because the Bible does talk about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, right here we have. And I, swear, I will tell you that they, God took them out yeah. because the Scriptures clearly tell us that. But anybody today, I'm not going to say that mm -hmm. because I don't have the knowledge. And, and no, that's what God did. I might think it. And I might think, you know, well, that's, that's very likely could have happened. But am I going to say it to other people? No, I'm not going to say it. Uh, but I will warn people about it. What did, what did Jesus mean when, when he said uh, that you will not be forgiven for blaspheming the Holy Ghost? Yeah, uh, if you look at the passages, uh, in a couple of books it talks about that. And, uh, and what had happened was the people accused Jesus of cast uh, uh, healing people by the power of the devil. Uh -huh. right? But they, they, they are accusing Jesus. And Jesus' response was, all manner of sin against the Son shall be forgiven, and all manner of sin against the Father shall be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. So they didn't mention the Holy Ghost. So why would he say that? Well, what does it take for a person to get saved? What's the first step in a person's salvation? Jesus. No, there's a step before that. That's not up to us. Oh, uh, admitting that you are a sinner? No. no. The drawing of Christ. The drawing, the drawing of Christ. The convicting of, by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. If a person rejects a conviction of the Spirit, that's the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Okay. So Jesus is saying, you know, you're dealing with the healing, what have you. Mm -hmm. But really, the pro true problem is, you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You are rejecting the convicting power of the Holy Spirit because in order to get saved, you have to have that first. God has to call before we answer the call. Okay. okay. And so that's what he's talking about there. And that's the only sin that I say will not be forgiven as long as you're committing that sin. And, you know, I committed that sin up until the day I got saved. After that, I no longer uh, rejected uh, Jesus by convic uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. So... Uh, that, that's 
the idea behind that. Their deaths, and I's hearing these words fell down, gave up the ghost. And very great fear came on all them that heard these things. And this is one of the reasons why I believe this was so open at the time. Just like under the law, it was open that the man, that the guy named Sis was put to death. It's because it's starting a new dispensation, and people need to make sure that they fully supported this new belief system. Not, not, not a contradictory belief system, what they had before, but a new addition to it. And so God used them as an example. And the example was there. Great fear came upon them, heard these things. Uh, then later on in verse 10, talking about Sapphira here now, then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Why? Because she agreed with her husband. They got, they, uh, got together and said, I'm going to say, we got sold this much, you tell them the same thing. Uh, she didn't know her husband was dead. She went in, told the same thing, and she was carried out just like her husband was. Uh, and here's First John five sixteen. It's talking about uh, Doctor Karen. Did did she have uh, didn't she have the opportunity to repent? Oh well, sure, yeah. Yeah. yeah she, see, yes. If she had maybe known her husband died, she uh -huh. might have. But it really doesn't make a difference. It was her responsibility anyway. Uh huh. Uh, and she did not do it. Uh, these are the first recorded believers in the church age that committed the sin unto death. And that's the fire. We don't know of anybody else who died uh, before that. There could have been others, okay? Uh, that's why I say first recorded believers. 1 Peter 4, 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them uh, be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So, very importantly, uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, if you remember that passage, I'm sure you do. And that's the passage where they were taking the Lord's table. And it says many of them uh, slept. Many were sick. Uh, mm -hmm. Many died. And the reason they had died is they had taken the Lord's table and made a drunken party out of it. There was the elite against the lesser. Those who had much were celebrating. Those who had nothing were, were uh, not allowed. And so, and that continued on in the church. And you also see the, the results of the sin are not always the same to every single person. Because in 1 Corinthians 11, many of them got sick. Right? And then some of them even died. Why didn't they all die? Or we all get sick. And then there's actually another uh, group that is rarely mentioned, and that's the ones that nothing happened to them. Right? Some, them. Some died, some got sick, and some nothing happened. Why? Is it God is not fair? No. God is absolutely fair in His judgment, and God can do whatever He chooses to do. Mm -hmm. But we can uh, surmise that the ones who died had committed this sin continually and were not ashamed of what have you, Whereas the ones who got sick may not have committed the sin as much, uh, what have you, and the ones who nothing happened, they might not have been uh, understanding in the situation. They might have been the ones who were getting pushed out because they didn't have the money that the other ones had. We don't know all of it. But what we, what we do know is God judges me on an individual basis with myself. And my grace that I run as a Christian, I'm not in competition with any person in this world. And if we would get that, I mean, you know, there's churches that don't understand that. There's schools that don't understand that. When we started New Hope Bible College, another one in town got upset with us uh, because they didn't want to be associated with us, and they changed their name from uh, a Bible college to a Baptist college. Uh, and that's what they even told our pastor, that we're, we don't want to be associated with these little Bible colleges popped up. I'm not in competition with them in any way whatsoever. Uh, now I am because they don't. It's not a Bible college at all anymore. They they're just teaching secular studies. So yeah, we are in competition in, in that sense. But I had a student uh, who came to me after he graduated. This has been several years ago in the '80s, I guess it was. And um, he he came in. He said, "I want to ask you something." And I could tell he was a little bit nervous about what he was trying to ask. And I said, "Okay, well, what is it?" He said, "Well." You know, our church is up in, near Siloam, which is up in Stokes County. 
and he said, it's not that close to New Hope Bible College, but he said, I just was thinking, and then I kind of feel like God would have me start a, a, a Bible Institute, a Bible College, would, would that offend you? And I said, why would it offend me? Why? I said, if God wants you open one across the street from here, and you teach the truth, right. praise God. I, it's not about what students we get and what students you get. I'm not in competition with them. You know, as long as we are teaching the truth. Now, if he was teaching lies, yeah, I have a problem with that. But if he taught the truth, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Next, chapter 5. We'll, actually, we'll go ahead and stop right there. Uh, next week we'll look at being at chapter 5.